Hoka is back with the brand new Challenger. The new Challenger 7 from Hoka, yes, they dropped the ATR from the product listing, but still have it featured on the shoe's tongue, is the closest that the Challenger has come to its original form in quite some time. The Challenger 7 features a simple, flexible mesh upper that allows for a decent amount of foot volume. This is stacked on a familiar layer of Hoka EVA midsole that feels cushioned and protective. The outsole rubber has minimal lugs that are more at home on dry or gravel trails. The shoe itself is considered Hoka's attempt at a road to trail or gravel shoe, and I've been enjoying the miles thoroughly. Does the marketing of this shoe as a gravel or light trail shoe do it a disservice? Is it a do it all or do just some type of shoe? We're gonna find out in today's review. Let's dive in. What is up everybody, Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. We're talking about this one, which I've been excited about for quite some time. It's here, it's in my hands, and it's been on the trails. It's from Hoka. It is their new Challenger 7. Yeah, I believe they've dropped the ATR. All the listings have removed the ATR, but for some reason, that ATR, it's still on the tongue itself, so. I'm gonna say it sometimes, I'm gonna remove it other times. Deal with it. Before we dive into the review of this shoe, a couple of things. First, join the GR crew. We have an amazing Discord server, a huge community of people from around the world. We talk about running, we talk about shoes, we talk about events, training, all the good stuff. Uh, if you would like to join the crew, which does support this channel, but gets you some awesome perks on the back end, link in the description. Second, this shoe is provided for review by Hoka. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative about this shoe. I am not financially compensated in any way for anything that I say in this review. All opinions are my own. You're the first to see it. Give yourself a pat on the back or anything else that needs patent. And let's dive in to today's review. We're gonna start with the basics where I like to talk about the things that I like and dislike about a shoe. Imagine we're in a running shoe store and we're just picking this up off the shelf and it's like, oh, hey, what do you like and not like about that? I'm about to tell you. Things that I like, comfort. I mean, this is obviously something that Hoka tends to do in spades. All of the shoes are, are cushioned and soft and, and comfortable. The Challenger 7 is no different. I think it's a super comfortable version of this shoe. I mentioned in the intro, it kind of harkens back to that original Challenger, which is a very comfortable trail version of the Clifton. I don't think we're quite there yet, uh, but it does a great job. It is a comfortable midsole, a comfortable shoe all around. Mm. The upper, I like this mesh upper. I think it's a flexible, kind of fun, comfortable mesh upper that does a good job of locking your foot down. It's not too overbuilt. There's not a ton of welded overlays. It is sort of this knitted mesh upper with enough protection and breathability to kind of give you plenty of enjoyment on the trails throughout the year. And finally, back to its roots. So here I have the original Challenger. This is what I ran the Cascade Crest 100 in. And this was one of the shoes that just really loved for its simplicity, its lightweightness, its cushion, its comfort. And we're getting back to those original roots in this seventh version. Finally, uh, it is a comfortable upper, it's a comfortable midsole, and it's got, you know, decent grip on the outsole. Great for those dry summer adventures. And that is sort of what I love about this shoe, is that it begins to get you back to that original feeling. That being said, it's not all Costco outings and creme brulee parties. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Challenger 7. Let's get to those now. The grip. So it's not Vibram. Uh, the rubber itself is not, you know, as sticky as I'd like. The lugs are shorter than I'd prefer. I get it, it's just like the original Challengers, which isn't much underfoot, but man, I, on a bad day, rainy day, roots are slippery, rocks are slippery, bridges are slippery. Uh, the outsole just doesn't do it much service. If you're running on dry trails, summer trails, gravel trails, it'll do just fine. It's just not very adaptive. The price, it's a $145 shoe that is still a pretty high price point to pay for what I would consider sort of that entry level trail shoe. I hate to use the term entry level because I think we're all trail runners that can benefit from, you know, a lot of different styles of shoes. This just sort of feels like a summertime shoe, dry specific conditions. And anytime you charge $145 for a shoe, I would sort of hope to get that year round adaptability no matter where you live, no matter what conditions you run in. Uh, and I do feel this is kind of specific. And finally, that swallow tail. So we've seen it in a couple of Hoka shoes. And by a couple, I mean, I'm all of them. Uh, the Swallowtail I don't think does the trail line much service because it does allow stuff in, debris in, light dirt in. Uh, let's see if there's anything. <laughs> I had dirt in the shoe, uh, which is just something that I've noticed with these Swallowtails is it just kind of opens up that heel to let stuff in and, uh, you know, trying to keep stuff out. 
for the most part. But that's pretty much it for dislikes. So let's get to the breakdown where we talk specifically about build quality, comfort, fit, price, and look, starting with build quality. I'm not totally sold on the build quality of this shoe. I think it is a really good mesh, and I think it is a good midsole. The outsole is a little like, oh, not quite what I would hope. It's nowhere close to Vibram. Uh, I'm also getting some wear and tear uh, between seams and stuff like that. So just the overall build quality is not quite what I'd hope comfort. It's a comfortable shoe. Uh, you're gonna be able to do long miles in this thing. It's gonna be super comfortable on those gravel trails, the single track, that dry sort of buffed out stuff. Uh, it is a comfortable shoe in those conditions and I think it is going to be fun for you because it is for me, fit. I actually like the fit of the shoe. I feel like I get a pretty good lockdown across the midfoot. I do have the ankle lock lacing sort of dialed in here so I'm able to get a better lockdown around the heel with the swallowtail. But I'm not complaining about the fit of the shoe. It's roomy, it's forgiving, it's not super narrow. So it is uh, a good fit. Price, 145 bucks, as I already mentioned, kind of high, wish it was a little bit lower. 15 bucks lower. Use the GR discount if you're a GR crew member. And finally, looks. Uh, funny, I feel like I've seen this exact color combo from Hoka before, looking at you, Zanel. Uh, it's just a fairly familiar, fun look from Hoka. I'm not complaining, I don't mind it. The orange, the blue, sure, I'm here for that. Uh, but let's see some other color versions, Hoka. Let's mix it up a little bit. Bringing us finally to our conclusion. I've really liked the Challenger over the years. As you can see, I've liked it since the very first version. I still have this pair of shoes, and I promised you it smells terrible. But here we are in the seventh version, and the shoe has changed a lot over the years, and not necessarily for the better. But what I think we're getting here in Challenger 7 is a hearkening back to the original form. We're getting there. It's a light, it's cushioned, it kind of provides you with the basic amount of grip. They're marketing it more now as a gravel shoe. I'm sure they want it to be that single track, that buffed out dry. California trail shoe. It's gonna do a good job in those conditions. I wish it was a bit more globally acceptable. The build quality is not the best. It may not necessarily hold up through an entire running season, but in the end, I don't mind it. Still makes me smile. It's just kind of one of those, I'm home for the holiday smiles. Like you're happy, but also, are you? So the final criteria is, if the Challenger 7 is a buy, try, or a why, I'm gonna recommend you give it a try. It is a solid trail runner, not for all conditions, but possibly for a lot of runners out there. Consider it if you have not already. That's pretty much my review of the Challenger 7. The question now turns to you, have you tried the Challengers at any point in their lifeline uh, sevens? Have you tried those? Let me know in the comments of this video. If you would like more information or if you would like to get a pair for yourself, I do have a link in the description that takes you over to Running Warehouse. It's an affiliate link. It does not cost you anything to use, but it does help the channel out. So consider using it. If you haven't already, uh, we work with Running Warehouse on all sorts of things. They're wonderful, we enjoy them, and uh, we hope you do too, so you can get all your running gear there. Uh, links, social media, blah, blah, blah. Join the GR crew, it's another way to help support the channel, but also join an amazing community of runners just like yourself from around the world. Discord server, book club, all sorts of fun stuff happening every single day, including live streams that bring us all together. Uh, so that's pretty much it, thanks all. Get out there and train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. I know I am, we'll see you guys next week for more fun. Bye-bye!